Fire is one of the most dangerous threats to the safe operation of an aircraft. So besides the obvious reason, why do we need a fire protection system installed on an aircraft? For early aircraft, detecting smoke or fire was fairly easy because a pilot could see most of the aircraft from the cockpit. For complex modern aircraft, however, it is nearly impossible for the crew to observe all parts of the aircraft which could lead to a fire not being detected until the hazard was way beyond control. Therefore, modern aircraft have overheat and fire detection systems installed so the crew can take appropriate actions to reduce or eliminate the fire hazard in time. We shall go over the basics of fire protection in this module. What causes fire? How we can fight it? What kind of fire suppression or extinguishing systems are used? in different parts of the aircraft. For a fire to occur, there have to be three conditions, oxygen, fuel and heat. A fire triangle illustrates the interdependency of these three conditions as can be seen in this graphic here. If we are to cut off one of the three sides of the triangle, the fire would go out. This is how fire extinguishers work. Essentially, we take off one of the elements of oxygen, heat or fuel from the equation, thereby extinguishing the fire. Since enough heat is required to raise the fuel to its ignition point, it is important that we monitor temperature rise in various aircraft fire hazard zones as well. For this purpose, along with fire detection systems, overheat detectors are also required on an aircraft. To understand how and why different types of fire detection systems are better suited for certain applications, we need to understand what kind of fire it is in the first place. A class A fire is caused by a solid combustible material burning such as wood, paper or cloth. This kind of fire could occur in passenger compartments. Class B fire is caused by flammable liquids such as gasoline, oil or jet fuel or paint thinners or solvents used in aviation maintenance. These kinds of fire could occur within engine compartments. Class C fire involves energized electrical equipment and have the added hazard from the electricity. Typically, this kind of fire could occur in electrical equipment bays or the area behind control panels in the aircraft. Class D fire involves burning metals such as magnesium. These kinds of fires are difficult to extinguish. If the wrong kind of fire extinguishing agent is used, it could not only prove ineffective, it could also lead the fire to spread. While this kind of fire is not typically seen during flight, it could happen in maintenance shops because of metal shavings exposed to high heat such as that from a welding torch or a high voltage source. Various compartments in the aircraft are classified into fire zones based on the amount and characteristics of air flow throughout these compartments. This also determines the effectiveness of fire detection systems as well as the effectiveness of the fire suppressant used. Class A zones have large quantities of air flow past regular arrangements of similarly placed obstructions such as the engine compartment. These zones have fire detection and extinguishing systems installed within. Though the fire extinguishing may not prove effective enough as there is a possibility of the fire suppressant to be carried out into the airstream before the fire is extinguished. Class B zones have large quantities of airflow past aerodynamically clean obstructions such as heat exchanger ducts within the aircraft. These zones have temperature sensing elements and fire extinguishing systems installed within so as to control a fire should one occur. Class C zones have relatively low air flow as compared to the first two, such as the APU compartment or the cargo compartment of the aircraft. 
class C zones have fire detection and extinguishing agents present. Class D zones have very little to no airflow. The wheel well area is an example of a class D zone. The lack of air makes the need for a fire extinguishing system non-existent as a fire would self extinguish once it consumes the atmosphere. However, a fire detection system is still required so that the crew is alerted to the damage. For example, if a fire should occur in the wheel well and the wheels are damaged, the fire detection system should alert the crew so that they can be prepared by landing and avoid further hazards because of the damaged wheels. Class X zones have large quantities of airflow between unusual constructions. The area between large structural parts is an example for this kind of zone. Because of the nature of this zone, the fire extinguishing agent required would be twice the amount as compared to class A zones. Now that we have an understanding of the fire zones within an aircraft, we can talk about fire detection systems. Within areas such as passenger compartments, the emission of smoke, pleasance of flames or heat is easy to detect. In most circumstances, the crew can take appropriate action immediately. However, if the fire should occur in an inaccessible area of the aircraft, it may be too late to deal with the hazard. Fire detection systems or electronic sensors are installed to monitor remote locations for smoke or fire. Examples of these remote locations could be engine nacelles, baggage compartments, electronic equipment bays, or lavatories. These fire detection systems monitor the fire zones which we previously discussed for heat, flames, temperature rise, or presence of smoke. The systems are designed such as to prevent false warnings whether the aircraft is on ground or in the air. Each detection system activates a light in the cockpit as well as an alarm that alerts the crew to the fire hazard as well as the location of the hazard. The systems reset automatically once a fire is extinguished so as to provide an immediate indication should the fire occur again in any case. Considering the environment in which they are installed, the fire detector units are designed to withstand exposure to oil, water, vibration, extreme temperatures and maintenance handling. There are two major types of fire extinguishing systems installed on aircraft. They are either portable or handheld fire extinguishers or they are fixed fire extinguishing systems. The most common fire extinguishing agents used on board aircraft are either carbon dioxide or halogenated hydrocarbons. Portable fire extinguishers are installed in cockpit and passenger cabins and they are installed in readily accessible manner and as close to the hazardous area as possible for the crew to use. Engines, baggage compartments, electronic equipment bays and such have more elaborate fixed fire extinguishing systems in place. The fire extinguishing systems for engines, APU etc. can be controlled from the cockpit using the fire control panel. Many transport category aircraft have fire extinguishers and trash receptacles as well to protect against fires and lavatories. We know the basic principle of fire extinguishing is to cut off one of the conditions from the fire triangle of oxygen, fuel or heat. On board an aircraft, it is usually oxygen being displaced by an inert fire extinguishing agent to cut off the fire. 
we also went over different classes of fire which is based on the material that causes the fire depending on which we could determine what kind of fire suppression material was to be used. The aircraft is divided into different fire zones based on the amount of air flow which translates to the amount of oxygen available for combustion. Each fire zone therefore has different requirements for detection and extinguishing of fire. The fire detection systems give off warnings to the crew to mitigate or eliminate the fire hazard in time. The warning comprises of warning lights and an oral warning. Accessible areas of the aircraft have portable fire extinguishers for use by the crew. Inaccessible remote locations such as engines or baggage compartments have fire detection systems and fire extinguishing systems in place. This series aims to introduce those interested in aviation to the basics, for newcomers to the field, for plane spotters, for fellow aviation enthusiasts as well as a refresher for aviation professionals. We shall follow up further with modules on targeted aircraft systems based on ATA chapters. You can click on the link below for the module that explains what ATA chapters are. Thanks for sticking with us this far. All questions and comments are welcome. We shall answer them to the best of our knowledge.